Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, I know, I've been slacking. I've been in a bit of the sads lately, but that's okay. We're getting up, we're getting out, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> tonight, we are gonna be talking about these two sick, sick people, uh, Fred and Rose West. This couple lived in the UK and terrorized and murdered and pedophiled their way around um, for like 30 years. It's, uh, it's bad. Um, these two sadistic assholes are just, this story altogether is just kind of shocking, especially when you take into the account that like, true like sadistic uh, mass murderers are very rare. Then you put that in the, to find a mass murderer who's a woman and then they find each other. I mean, this is like once in a lifetime and that's probably a good thing. Let's hope it's like once in a century type thing because I'm sure it's not. But in my mind, I'm hoping that, you know, it's this, cause this story is bad. This story is real bad. So um, if you're sensitive to children being hurt um, or rape stories, this is not your thing. I got other videos. I'd go check those out. Uh, this story is dark um, and does include children violence. So you have been warned, turn away now. We are back in 76. Uh, as I'm talking about this, I got a couple random things to do in here of collect bone meal, which is a uh, death claw poop. Uh, so that should be super fucking fun to do. Um, I also need to find more adhesive so I can build this uplink thing. Um, and I'm going to turn off that investigate the shack thing because um, it's just going to... Oops. Yeah. It's a daily thing anyway, so... It's just going to be annoying to have, like, all... It's already enough things on my thing. Okay. So. Here we go. I guess we're going to go this way to the circle. Okay, so we're going to start with Fred West because Fred West is older than Rose. So uh, Fred was born in 1941 and he was born to uh, pretty poor parents. Uh, they were unable to successfully uh, keep a child alive before him. Um, not in a sadistic way, just, you know, it was back then. Kids died a lot. So... Uh, Oh crap, I'm over encumbered. So when he was born and actually, um, I should probably use the bait, right? Cause then I could throw the bait. Oh, this bait's gonna come in handy. Good, good. I'm glad I didn't get rid of these. Usually I get rid of these kind of things. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to drop some armor. Am I out of the chat? That's why. Eh. Two power armor chassis? Why do I have two power armor chassis? Matter of fact, I feel like I'm missing a lot of uh, stuff here. Mm. Wooden chess piece. Oh, the starting metal's better, so. We'll just drop you two. Oh my god, I'm so... <gasps> I'm so heavy! Okay. Uh, and I have all this freaking... I thought I did scrap all this. Oh, uh, I can't die. Or I'm gonna lose all the... You know what? I need to go back... To... This bunker. And, like, hide all this in a drawer. So I don't lose it all. That's what I'm gonna do. Anyways, sorry. If you're only here for the story, then <laughs> welcome to my channel. Uh, it's a bit ADHD over here. So, um, so Fred's parents, having Fred, he was seen as a beautiful. I gotta do it again. I, was, I already did this. Why do I have to do it again? Only one likeness. 
I didn't see the uh <laughs> I was like uh wasn't there a doorway anyways okay so he was seen as a very beautiful child uh he had these crystal blue eyes the curly blonde hair his mother loved him too much loved him way too much um so he would um end up definitely being molested by her it is thought that uh I'm just gonna put it on here transfer Junk. And we're just going to put all you in here. And I guess hopefully nobody comes and steals my container of stuff. Because <laughs> uh, it's going to be pretty depressing. <sighs> and I'm still too fucking heavy. Freaking A, man. Okay. <sighs> Apparel. Uniform. Is that what I turn into? Because I got a new pack. I'm going to keep that. I don't want that. Oh, why can't I store that here? I gotta keep my veil of secrets. Alright. Otherwise. So we're gonna put that in there. Still not light enough. Ah, okay. Um Yes. Hatchet. You're going in. I need to make more camera film so I can actually take pictures. Oh, you're broken, so I guess you can go in. And I can't use you yet. Pressing, so you can go in. Okay. Now I'm light enough. Please, 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 nobody take all my stuff. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Uh, so... This is the house that I grew up in. They did end up having like four more children after him and um, they grew up poor. He was seen as educationally challenged, um, a bit slow. So by 15, uh, Fred had pretty much quit school anyways. And um, okay. I'm gonna go back, so. um, he quit school and he was working on a farm and making money that way. Also by 15, he was seen as a very handsome boy. All the girls wanted him. He liked uh, stealing girls from his friends. Unfortunately, the girls would learn pretty quick that Fred, while handsome, um, was not a great partner because uh, Fred didn't know what no meant. Fred grew up in a household where his mother was molesting him and his father was molesting his sisters and... Um, it was seen as when someone wants sex, you just give them sex. So that's how he lived his life. Uh, he would touch the girls inappropriate, catcall them. And I mean, um, it's, people are pretty sure, well, there's no evidence. There's nobody like came forward. People are pretty sure that Fred also probably, um, raped some girls at, during this time too. By 17, Fred had, uh, Fred buys himself a motorcycle. It's like his dream bike. He's so fucking excited. And he immediately uh, crashes it and ends up severely injured. He um, ends up having to go to the hospital, getting all types of screws and plates put in. And after this accident, he kind of loses some of that handsome man appeal. Um, he's not like Quasimodo in it, you know, but he uh, he's not as handsome as he was he also as he's getting older his blonde hair is fading it's turning darker and um so and he's already known as a fucking rude ass horn dog so uh by this time a lot of the girls are starting to let me make sure i have this bait 
Oops, wrong thing, wrong thing. Definitely don't want my camp over here. God bless it. <sighs> I know what buttons to push. Yes, okay. Right, here we go. I should probably crouch. I gonna need to hide and then Oh, I wonder if I have adhesive in my camp. Let's see. Okay. Go hidden. Seeing anything. Is it this house? Oh, for a second I thought that was like a death claw nest. Okay. So what is that? I've been seen. What are they shooting at? Oh. oh, well, that was quick. I killed one before they all killed me. I moved my camera, so I keep looking over there, expecting my camera to be over there. My camera's right here, so. Excuse me. So, Frank gets in this accent. He's no longer handsome. He's not pulling in the ladies like he used to, but he does meet a very important lady um, to his life. And that is Miss Rainey. Rainey is a uh, Scottish runaway. She also grew up in a fucked up family, so. Fred's fucked up behavior actually seems very normal to her, if not super fucking romantic. Uh, okay, so now I need to, I guess, turn on my radio. Hunter. Hunted station? Frequency active. Defense Intelligence Agency covert operations liquidation exercise initiated. Hotel, okay. uniform, November, Tango. Oh, I didn't want that. Waiting for opt in for required number. I don't want that. So where uh crap, it's gonna pull me into something. I don't want it, I don't want it. How do I stop it? Tune to station? I thought I was going to get like a beeping. Oh god. Where is he? Well at least I can kill him one hit. I just have to be able to see him. That's a weird to me that, uh, oh, that's a mirror lock, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely not. Nope, just a rock. Okay. Okay. So Rainy and him are, they fall in love, but it is very on again, off again, abusive, a lot of yelling, a lot of fighting. Um, so, uh, they do end up breaking up and, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Okay, so I want to now. Debate. Debate. Did I throw it to uh
Oh no, don't walk this way. Oh, so they do end up breaking up and Rainy goes back to Scotland. And then um, Fred at this time would start dating a 13 year old, a couple 15 year olds, and he would get the 13 year old pregnant, which would get him in trouble. And he would end up getting arrested, but the 13 year old um, would not want to testify. So his case would shit fall all apart. Crap, 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 crap. He's yelling. Um, his case would fall apart. He wouldn't get actually in trouble for this, but everyone now knows he sleeps with 13 year olds and this would piss his parents off. So they would, um, come on. Why aren't these things working? So they would uh, kick him out of the house. Um, and it is thought that his mom was just, did this more out of jealousy than actual like concern. So, oh, there he goes. Nope. Look at that, man. I get it. Oh, why did it explode? Crap. I did was piss him off. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Where is he? Came up the mountain. Well, this isn't working. Um, so, but they didn't make him stay away for too long, and pretty soon, let's just try to fight a death blow. And pretty soon, his, um, Rini does come back for him, and, but now she is pregnant, um, because she would, um, she was a prostitute. So, she, um, uh, she is pregnant. It's definitely not his. He knows this. Okay, so that's kind of close to the Ellis bunker. Ooh, I guess we'll just respawn there. Um, so at first he's like, it's cool. I'm good with a hanger and we'll just take care of this. But that didn't really work. So then he's like, well, I guess it's mine. So we'll just get married. <clears throat> Unfortunately for him, um, when the baby comes out, it is a girl they named her Charmaine, uh, but she is a mixed child. And Rini already knew her, her family knew, and they were already like, nope, get the hell out of here. But they tried to lie to his family and make it um, like it wasn't like their baby died and they just adopted her, And but his family wasn't buying it. He also himself was not super excited about the idea of a mixed child. So, uh, you know, he didn't like break up with her or anything. A hut. He was like, oh, did I use up all my grenades? I did. God bless it. I don't think I was this close. Take it, take it. I just want the poop. No, oh, I died, but I got it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I think I got it anyways. Um, so. <clears throat> so now him and Rainy decide to go back to Scotland since his family's really not having this baby and they go live in Scotland in this little house. Okay. Now I can go back to the other bunker because I have all that stuff just in that bin. We're going to do that. Um, 
So in Scotland, they have like this little house and he has a plot of land right next to the little house. And he gets a job as an ice cream truck man, which is horrendous because he, um, you know, uses it to lure little girls into his truck. Like between the ages of 13 and 15, that seems to be his favorite age range, though he's not above younger. He also ends up killing a four-year-old boy running over him, so that's fun. Um, Rini is prostituting, um, and they are having a very volatile relationship right in front of their daughter. Uh, he also would be, so in that plot of land, a lot of people would be like, oh, what are you going to do with that? You're going to garden it? You're going to, he'd always be like, well, I don't know, Bill shed, maybe. He always made excuses for it, but he always kept it empty, even though he'd be seen in the garden. And then during his time, I mean, these dots would not be connected until much later because of, like, obvious reasons. But during his time there, girls were going missing in his favorite age range. And unfortunately, the, like, 30 years it took for cops to finally catch him and his wife, um, by the time they could go back and check out this plot where people were like, hey, he owned that plot of land. You should probably check that out for some of these missing girls. Uh, it was already turned into an interstate. So, um anybody he probably buried there is now just forever gone and that's really sad uh, so him and Rini would end up getting uh having a baby of their own and uh so excuse me cc3 Charmaine was born that's the first girl i'm not checking my notes Anne marie 64 is when Anne marie would be born and of course he favored her because that was his daughter uh, not just Rini's child. But don't worry, that doesn't... That's not the special treatment you think is going to get her. Um, do, do, do. He was also uh, most likely philandering around... Not most likely, he was. He also had two little boys from other girls. And so by this time, the heat's starting to get on him as these teen girls are popping up pregnant. So he's like, I need to move back to England. And Rini's like, at first she was like, mm, no. He's like, well, I'm gonna take the kids, so we're gonna move to England. So then Rini was like, well, I guess if you're taking the kids, let's go. So she goes with him, but she also, um, uh, she also brings a friend named Anna, and they all live in this like trailer together um a camper and so it's two babies fred Rini, and her friend anna and um i have all this stuff though mm -hmm. okay. i'll go over to my workbench what why are you back it. Hold it up again. Whee. Okay. Oh, nope. This is the room section. Room section. Let me go this way. Um. What? Okay, hold on. I know I had nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Oh, bugs. In that. Um, in that group of stuff I just put in my bag. I know I did. Them where they want me to collect them? I don't need to use it. Now I weigh too much to fast travel. And I'm trapped in here! <sighs> and I'm way too far from my camp, so. Yep. We're gonna have to move the camp to us. 
Probably for the best, because then I could just use my own stash place and my own workbenches. It makes sense. Okay. So anyways, so now they're living in England. Two kids, Rini, Anna, Fred, and a camper. Fred still very uh, abusive towards Rini, making her prostitute. Um, he himself is just robbing things. Uh, so pretty soon, Rini, she's also having other, and he's cheating on her constantly. He, she also finds another lover, but he's in Scotland. And so her, she goes to Anna, she's like, we gotta get out of here, he's too fucking violent. And Anna's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. But little does she know, Anna, behind her back, was more like, eh, but actually, I love him, so I'm gonna rat you out. So Rini and Anna plan to leave, like while Fred's at, off doing his work, and, but Anna tells Fred to come home early so that she, he can uh, catch her. So then, this is a good spot. I never set my house down, ever. It has my stash box. This is why I didn't want to move my camp at all. I don't know what I did, but it never wants to be, like, placed. I'm going to place my fence, though. <laughs> and we'll put Beckett over here. tinker chop. So when Fred gets home and he sees uh, Rena packing to leave, he gets super pissed. Like, and he tells her, well, go ahead and get out then and uh, have a nice fucking life, but I'm keeping the kids. So she is just kind of like, okay, fine. Um, but I'll be back for them. Bench. Don't mind me. Just taking it all in. My dreams need to settle down. I can't place my house. Everything else can be placed. Not my flipping house. Uh, so Rini leaves, so now Anna gets to play mommy. And she is so happy to do this. Like, super fucking stoked. Um, because she loves Fred. Now, I must add, I forgot to say this, um, Anna is only 16. And she had been writing her parents and stuff about how her and Fred are in this beautiful home together, and he's gonna divorce Rini, um, and he wants to be with her and blah, blah, blah. So uh, she's now taking care of Fred's kids and she does end up pregnant with Fred's baby. Well, Rini ends up coming back. And when she sees that her friend has kind of taken her position, even though she came back to get her kids, she kind of almost immediately forgets that and starts uh, going on an angry, um, kind of mission to just uh, sorry going to a oh, I forgot I got chicken coop I'm so exciting oh I don't have any corn yeah I just want to build my stash box. Ah, uh, kicking back with a drink and just uh, admiring the scenery. 
Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go in here. Uh, look at this. Enter my shelter. And then build my stash box inside my shelter. Okay. So Rainy comes back. She goes on like a crime spree, ends up getting arrested and stuff because she, um, there we go. The little stash box. Right. That's all. Pretty sure I have more bobbleheads. Can I? There we go. I'm turning stuff. I didn't do that. There we go. Yay! Look at them all. So cute. All right. Now, do I have any adhesive? So, this does end up getting Rini in trouble with the law. Uh, but Fred sees how upset Rainy is, and he decides that he loves Rainy, and he wants um, for her. There we go. Wait. So this is this is junk I have. Okay. So I need to go back over. There we go. Okay. So he wants um, her to love him and come back. So he kills Anna and buries her so that Rainy won't have to worry about it. And uh, so Anna is considered his first official death. Um, that even though it was possible that he was killing before her she's the first one that they can actually find and actually um uh put to him okay so asbestos i think i need some asbestos no, i can't remember what i need i need acid do I not have, I really have nothing? <sighs> I'm really hoping I'd have. <sighs> I'm just gonna put it all in here for now. I'm gonna go find it. put a pause on Fred's story and it is now 1953 and we have Rose being born no okay it's the six remember his kids were born in the 60s we're gonna back up to Rose being born in 1953 and unfortunately Rose oh, excuse me was born in about the same situation as um Fred um, she was also born educationally challenged. Um, she would be seen as overweight and get joked on a bunch, but she was feisty and she would fight your ass, <laughs> uh, for joking on her. So she, uh, she would also be, uh, lose her virginity to her father at a young age, most likely like t between 10 and 12. She'd never admit to it. Um, so like while Fred was all about telling his story, Rose, not so much. Oh, I forgot to put the super stage back. I do. 
Um, but it is, she definitely lost her virginity to her father and her brothers. She would walk, she was very sexually promiscuous. She would walk around the house naked. Um, her father and brothers would use her as they pleased. Um, and her father was also very violent. Her mom and dad actually uh, were known to have their own mental illnesses. Her mom was even getting electroshock therapy for like her depression and stuff before Rose was even born. Um, and actually, while she was pregnant with Rose, she uh, she was getting electroshock. So, <sighs> so she did. Um, that's weird. And yeah, you're broken. There you go. Um, so she, even by 13, she was being sexually promiscuous with everybody in town. Like, if you wanted it, just go to Rose. She'd give it up. Um, she would end up, um, at 15, her mother did get tired of the abuse her father was putting out. So she did end up uh, going to... Let me know if I'm in your way. Um, lived with her mother when her mother left her father, but she actually ended up missing her dad. So she went back to live with her abuser. Um, she would get a job as a waitress. And now at 15 is when she would meet Fred, she was a waitress, and he was making deliveries to her shop one day, and uh, it was like love at first sight. They were both smitten in the worst ways. So once again, because she was uh, used to this uh, abuse, Fred's personality and stuff uh, she thought was super romantic, and uh, that he gave her all the right kind of attention. So they started dating. Anytime she had off, she would be at Fred's camper uh, with the kids. Uh, Rini, once again, had disappeared. Uh, Rini and Fred also weren't great parents. They would periodically put their kids in foster care, take them out, you know, just whenever they felt like it. So she ends up, Fred is like, no, I really want to meet your parents. So she's like, okay, sure. And uh, when her dad meets him, he's like, nope. That guy's a fucking scumbag. And it's not like he was wrong, but also, once again, like how Fred's mother kicked him out. I don't think this actually came from a fatherly love place. I think this came from a, um, I don't want you, uh, you know, taking my girlfriend from me, which is. Mm. So he does. Uh, she's like, nah, I'm still going to see him. So he's like, oh, OK. So he puts him like in a he puts her in like a home for troubled girls and is like. Okay, so now you can't see him. Is that a herd of death claws? Muralax. Who are they attacking? Is that raiders? What is that? Oh, it's a settler. Oh, should I go help? Sunny makes it a good hokey. About time to eat. Hmm. Oh, I'm sore all over. Building this place up is hard work. This is robots. This seems like a terrible place to want to build up. Uh, <gasps> duct tape. Yes. And that. Oh, can't die again. It's hard work making a living out here. Abandoned house. Thought I was being smart coming out here, getting a nice, fully furnished house all to myself. Boy, was I wrong. I heard some crazy explosion, and next thing you know, this weird smoke comes barreling down from what I guess was the mountains. I sealed up the house, but that was the beginning of the end. Next thing I knew, this entire area was transforming. It's like the swamp. Building this place up is hard work. How's it going? What's up, man? This search for stuff. Oh, that's it's not the jump button.
Oh, I do have it. Sweet. So she goes to this girl home for girls that she's only supposed to be able to leave when setting up places like foundation. Um when she's either going to work or going to see her parents. Um oops. Push that in. Sometimes I forget this isn't Fallout New Vegas or Fallout there. Oh, I died over here before. That's fun. I don't wanna die again though, because I finally have some adhesive. should probably actually just start practicing my fast traveling skills. I can't. I should definitely be here. Let me go here. Oh, there's camp. Okay. First, going back to camp. Okay. So, but she would go see him anyways. She didn't care. She was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to work. I'm gonna go see my parents. And by the time she was 16, they were like, well, you're out of the system, have fun. And she moves in with Fred. Um, Fred told her that Rini was his ex-wife, uh, which wasn't true. He was married to Rini, but Rose doesn't give two shits anyways. And she pretty immediately becomes pregnant and um, starts playing house. Uh, oh, yeah. And I saw the Super Marines killing some death balls. Uh, I gotta catch up to my notes. <laughs> Put my adhesive in here so I don't have to lose it. She ends up pregnant. So she's 16 now, she's pregnant, she's living in a camper with Fred and his two daughters. And, but Fred has been robbing places. So Fred ends up going to jail for this. And she now is left by herself as a single pregnant mother of two, which she's not great at. Uh, she pretty immediately becomes highly frustrated and wants uh, to start beating the children. Uh, what she does. She starts beating them very badly uh, for all types of reasons. Excuse me. So, uh, mostly Charmaine, though. She would then have, not Charmaine, yes, Charmaine, excuse me. Uh, she had her daughter, and I didn't write down what she named her, but I think this is Heather. Heather's her first daughter. So now you have Charmaine, who is just Rainey's. You have Anne Marie, who is Fred and Rainey's. And now you have Heather, who is Fred and Rose's first child together. And uh, they, uh, pretty soon after this, Rainey goes missing. And the school does question like one time, where is she? And Rose just says, oh, we're putting her in a different school. And her school goes, okay. And never fucking questions it, never looks into it, never wonders why the other school doesn't ask for her files and they just eventually throw them away. So uh, this is a good early chance for these two psychopaths to be stopped that um, a broken system, they were able to slip through a very, very broken system. So then, uh, Fred gets out of jail and Rose is like, oh yeah, I killed your daughter. So I'm gonna need you to like chop her up and hide that body. <laughs> Thanks, babe. And he's like, oh yeah, no problem. And when he's caught, he does make comments on how like she was harder to bury for because of how innocent she was. Um, but he had, he still chopped her up and buried her uh, with very little qualms about it. So they end up um, after that, oh, is one of those frog things after me? Oh, a uh, newt. Oh god, my sword is doing nothing here. Uh, uh, run away, run away. 
What's up here? Anybody want to shoot this newt? Anybody here to shoot the newt? Nobody's here to shoot the newt. Crap. Is the newt blind? Am I just already too far away? That's fine. Go away, newt. <laughs> um. Am I? Oh, I was running. That's right. So, uh, Rainy ends up showing back up some time later and is like, hey, I want to see my daughter. And Fred's like, oh, right. Cool. Okay. Yep. We can, uh, we can do that. We can totally do that. Hey, before we do that, though, uh, would you like to go drinking with me? Have a little good time together again, old time's sake. And Rainy is like, uh, absolutely. I absolutely would love to go get a drink. <laughs> you know me so well, Fred. Um, and then after he gets her just belligerently crazy drunk, he then um, takes her in the car and um, strangles her. So he then kills Rini and um, ooh, ooh, has my suit. Necessary. Uh, and bury and chops her up and buries her also. Oh, adhesive. Oh, yes. All right, I got the adhesive. Yes. That's what I need. Okay, we got a nitrogen. Oh, we need it. Whole canisters. Okay. Sweet. Ooh, what's in here? I have to come read the lore later. I know you guys aren't my lore side. If you would like to see me read lore, please come watch me live on Twitch, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and Fridays. <laughs> Get a little selfless plug there. Anyways, so, also I read these stories live. Uh, I just re-record them so you guys don't see me conversating with other people. Other than myself, you know. Uh, so, now that Rini is gone, and Tremaine is gone, we now only have Anne-Marie. Fred and Heather and Rose all living together. And um, this is when they end up, uh, you know, moving into 25, uh, 25 Cromwell. And Rose is prostituting. Red is, Fred, Red. Fred is doing any skeezy Yo, there's robots, and I don't want to lose this stuff. Ah, fuck me, man. Damn it. I really thought I was going to get away with just killing some roaches. Okay, so... Uh, moving into 25 Cromwell. So this is a pretty big uh, type place. And there's like three stories. So they have the bottom basement area that they turn into a sex dungeon. They have their main floor that they and the kids live on. And they have um, an upstairs that they go ahead and make uh, a tenant space so they can take in tenants and stuff. And uh, Rose is sleeping with tenants, she sleeps with anybody really. And sex is happening all over this house uh, for the girls to see rose gets pregnant again like multiple times again and um so she uh so now we're gonna get into some of their victims and um the timeline really just starts getting a little more um jumpy from here okay got the potassium just need the nitrate and to go back to where I died. Uh, so our first victim is Caroline and uh, she would actually be uh, last seen hanging out with her boyfriend um, and then she was going to take a bus home. And this is where Fred and uh, Rose pick her up. And they first offer her like a nanny position. They're like, hey, we need a nanny. You want to be our nanny? And they um, are like, yes. 
And she's like, oh yeah, that sounds great. Cause you know, Fred and her really uh, just look like a, a nice little couple, you know? Like, I just, I just gotta go, I just gotta go. Don't wanna fight any battles. I'm gone, I'm gone. Get out of this situation so we can just bash her. Okay. So, um, they hire her. Oh, shit. We go back into the building. Okay, well, maybe that robot won't be there. I didn't run too far, I guess? Oh, shit. I'm a much better tactician than you. It's all in the brain, you see. Oh, wait. I uh, actually put them in. Shit. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Nitrogen. I'm gonna have to kill that robot. Where is she? Oh, why is she up there now? Crap. Oh, there's multiple. Shit. This is bad. So much to do. Fuck me. Okay. So at first, Caroline is being exposed to all the sex and stuff, and she even does get on in on some of the orgy having, but she does get a little bit like this is just too much. Rose is hitting on me too much. I don't like it. So she decides she wants to leave. Um. But the couple decides no. You don't get to tell us you're leaving. So they, she didn't leave on bad terms. They were like, fuck you guys. You're just kind of like, oh, this isn't really my deal. And they, at first, the rest were like, oh, no, no problem. Don't worry about it. We totally understand. Um, and they see her again in town and they're like, hey, did you need a ride? Are you doing all right? And she's like, oh yeah. So she gets the ride. They take her, they rape her in the car. Uh, they take her home to their sex dungeon. They rape her some more. Um, but she pretended to kind of be into it and be like, oh yeah, thank God you guys found me and did this horrible stuff to me. I'm so glad this happened. And it, uh, made them be like, um, okay, cool. And they, uh, let her out pretty much. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, caps. They have a stim pack. Okay. Well, she She's the one that's up. They could have programmed me to love, to forgive, but no. It's broken? There we go. Wait. Where's my death bag? No, he's like that. Hmm? All right. Uh-oh. <gasps> no! Did I lose it? No, 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 it's over here. It's about to see. Oh no, but did I lose the... What's hitting me now? God bless it! Why is it a dark cloud? What is that? I hope we can still be friends when this is all over. <laughs> Chance of success to be 
Need to put them all in the room. I need her to come up here. You could run. I am trying to kill you, you know. So, uh... Um, so she gets away, luckily, uh, for her. She does get away. And is this a blue? Okay. Now what? Oh, I need more blooms. Great Ratchel at Kim Workbench. Oh, there's a Kim Workbench. Um, so pretty soon after her, then we get Linda. Um, she was their next nanny and they, uh, did the same thing. Do you want to come be our nanny? Then they sexually tortured her in the dungeon and they buried her in the backyard. Um, and nobody looked for her. Then you have Carol Ann Cooper. She was a runaway, uh, they picked up and uh, gagged and raped and tied up uh, and buried back guard because she was a runaway. Nobody came looking for her. Oh, another blue. Oh, she, um, the next one, oh, and seven, so now we're up to 70, oh. Did I talk about Lucy? Now, Lucy was their first girl they got uh, that act wasn't a runaway, wasn't, you know, a prostitute, you know, didn't live in the uh, dregs of human dumb, I guess, you know? And uh, she was looked for. She was looked for hard. They had whole search teams out for her, uh, but they had nothing that could connect her to 25 Cromwell. So uh, they got away with it. And... Uh, in 73, they have their third child. Uh, then they take a Swiss girl and, uh, her family did want to look for her too, but, uh, she was, so they can craft before the robot comes back. Uh, what am I crafting? A rad shield. Gotcha. There we go. This is one. Cool. That man was added. Okay. That's it. And we did it. Quest completed. Now I'm gonna fast travel to the other place. I have my glue. And I can. I want Ella's bunker. I want. Yes. Do you want Ella? No. Okay. Which bunker do I want? Oh, this bunker up here. Eddie's bunker. Well, first my camp. We'll get the other adhesive. And then. The bunker. Anyways, 
Okay, so 74, they get a uh, 15-year-old Shirley Hubbard, another runaway with a, a hard life that, fuck, oh, how am I over encumbered? Oh my god. Nope, wrong button. Uh, can we eat a bunch, maybe? Cold water. There we go. Um. Uh, So she was another runaway. Um, they actually would get sicker with her. They wrapped her whole head in tape and stuck a tube up her nose through it so that she could breathe, so they could uh, torture her longer. Um, then uh, they end up taking one of their lodgers. She was, um, her name was Juanita. She was another 15 year old. Um, she would come and go and she was supposed to be going to a friend's wedding and um, Excuse me. She's supposed to be going to a friend's wedding to nanny for her uh, at the wedding, but she ended up never making it because he was pick her up and took her. So, um, and killed her. And uh, her family also never fucking looked for her because she was just known for running away. So many of these people, um, I feel terrible for because it's like, even the ones who had people in their lives, like the, the first girl, Anna, while her mother did write to her, she would still sit there and she just assumed that, oh, Anna just, you know, didn't want to come home. She was probably having a good life. Like, how do you not look into that, you know? So, um, she ends up, so yeah, nobody, another, once again, nobody's looking for them. Now we have, Officially, what are we? <laughs> One, two, three, like six people buried in the basement. And so I know you have to be like, how is nobody hearing this? How is nobody smelling this? Well, the tenants said that they did smell and hear things, but Fred was always doing so much work, uh, like construction around the house and in the basement that they just assumed that's what it was and didn't look more into it. They were also always having the cops there for getting busted for marijuana and shit, but the cops still just saw them as a nice couple who had a bunch of kids and sure they had some parties, but no, they were, you know, not threatening in any way. So they never searched deeper to ever go see their fucking sex dungeon. Um, also, while all this is happening, uh, just assume these are not their only victims. Uh, they definitely are raping like crazy during this time. Also, Rose, they're making films and um, sleeping with tenants, and he's cut holes into walls so he can watch Rose with people. Uh, so, now we go um, to do a little jump here. It's kind of a jump back to Anne Marie. So, when Anne Marie was about 10, uh, they decided it was time for her to take on the family duties, and that meant pleasing her parents. Um, sexually. So they took her down into the basement and they held her down and they uh, raped her with dildos and um, her, both of her parents partook. And they kept doing this uh, forever. Uh, so she was also, by the time she was 12, expected to prostitute like her mother did and sleep with tenants and stuff. So uh, she was, by the time she was 15, she was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Um, but you do also have to realize she still held no hate. She, this girl had major Stockholm syndrome. She held no hate and ill will and even loved her father dearly um, and would still stand up for her parents. But she did want out of the house, so she did leave. Um, and she ended up getting a boyfriend. And so now their attentions, uh, so she's about 15, she leaves. Their attentions now turn to Heather and their other daughter. Um, I think her name is Vera. And... Um, this way. Okay. Can I do it now? Yes. Make it. 
Bernadette. And have Brad Roach fucking kill me, man. That's just embarrassing. Okay. Select uplink repaired at the scorch detection terminal. Okay. Um, so, they also end up getting, um, a woman named Shirley. She would come in as a tenant and would start a relationship with Rose. So, <laughs> this one's going to be a lot like the first girl, Anna. Rose, a little bit. Rose, Fred, and Shirley end up kind of having a, um, purple happening. Some of the scorch detectors in the area are malfunctioning and need upgraded parts. It looks like my fear of the Myers ecosystem wreaking havoc on them has come true. For these repairs, first you need to get to Raleigh Clay's bunker. He's got replacement motors for the fans we use to keep the detectors dry. Oh, and write this down. R plus P421. It's Raleigh's password, and you'll need it. If you didn't catch that or you want more info, you can always check my workstation terminal. It's all there. Good luck. Hmm. Right. Um. Now to the next bunker. So, uh... Then they were a happy little throuple, and her and Shirley get pregnant at the same time. And Rose is kind of a little off her rocker on this pregnancy. Um, she's sitting on the back porch with her cha-cha out. She's uh, very hostile. And she ends up having uh, her child first. I'm pretty sure it was a little boy. And um, as soon as she has her child, Shirley's is due like in a month. And she's kind of like, you know what? I don't like this whole thruple situation. Um, get rid of her. And so Fred is like, oh, okay. So they kill her. <laughs> and Fred, uh, for some reason, does even more cutting. Like he scalps her and shit. And it's thought that they, I mean, they took the baby out. And so um, some detectives like to think that maybe they were trying to save the baby. They did seem to like having kids around. Um, Others are just like, maybe he just wanted to see what it was like to cut a baby out. But they put, they buried her with her child next door. And, um, oh, I need to go to my camp first. Wow, this is so tedious. Okay. So, um, by 78, Rose gives birth to another daughter. Okay. And then, uh, 78, Rose's father dies, which fucking good riddance. Uh, it was also found out that. Uh, they probably weren't so sad when he died just because uh, he had stayed a um, client of Rose's. Gross. Uh, Fred apparently has a brother who is also a client, but not of Rose's, of like his small children, like five year olds. Um, terrible. So, uh, then in 80, Rose gives birth to a, another boy. So now this is six children Rose has. Um, and 10 year old Heather is the oldest and now she is being sexually abused and becomes the forefront of her father's abuse and she hates it. Um, she is not as compliant as Anne Marie was. She, uh, gets depressed. She starts failing schools. I mean, she just has a terrible reaction to it and her parents see this as her being a lesbian and this makes them incredibly unhappy. Which is so fucking weird because Rose sleeps with women, I've but so much. um, so quickly, they're just going with it, I guess. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> so, uh, but Heather's like, I gotta get the fuck out of here, and starts taking. Heather is intelligent, and she starts taking tests that she could graduate early, and um, start working and move out by the time she gets to fifteen and stuff. So, um. Um, 
And during this time, a lot of the children start running around, running away, even boys and stuff. But they always end up having to come back because they have nowhere else to go and they get terrible beatings for this. Uh, these people are also physically abusive to their kids. Um, Fred would also uh, end up building, so they decided to turn their sex, they decided there were just too many bodies in the sex dungeon at this point. So they went ahead and cemented over everything and uh, built up little like room areas and you would think they were just building this amazing kid place like, oh, maybe they turned it all around, they love their children. Nope, they just built a place that their kids could go to get the fuck away from them. And um, Uh, there's some right away. Let's see. Uh, so they end up putting the kids down in the basement and telling them, don't fucking come upstairs. Like, ever. We never want to see your fucking faces. Do not fucking come up these steps. Uh, so now Heather, a little bit, being a little bit older, she's almost like 15 now. And she's trying to get the fuck out. She can't get the fuck out. She's super mopey. Her parents hate this. They just see her as ungrateful, like an ungrateful little jerk. And they're like, look, they end up in a huge fucking fight. And one of the little brothers says he saw like her mother throw her down and start stomping on her head and Heather stopped moving. Um, but that wouldn't come out till later. So they end up in a fight. Heather does end up dead. Uh, when the kids come back home and they're like, oh, where's Heather? Uh, the parents are like, oh, she got a job in a different city. So she went to work there. And he asks one of the boys to dig a hole, tells him that it's going to be for a pool, and then puts, uh, tells him to go inside, puts his body in it, and then builds like a, more like a patio over it. And the boy immediately knew that he, he did not dig a hole for anything other than to, um, for his dead sister. Like, the kids even start this really dark fucking joke of like, oh, you better behave or you'll end up two down and three across, because that's where her, uh, pavement was oh sh shit what the fuck oh god okay run away run away he has a launcher oh god oh god if i can hit with a launcher i am out okay so, uh, <sighs> so now we're getting towards the end here of where they start kind of screwing up. So remember, they've never stopped really raping and, uh, they just have their main ones that bodies are found. Uh, so with Heather now dead and now the youngest now taken over, it was found out that Heather t had told a friend what was happening to her and that friend told her parents, but her parents didn't believe her because the West were such a nice couple. So uh, the West kind of, uh, Rose is kind of like, oh shit. Well, if our kids are gonna fucking talk and they just can't go to school. So she takes them out of school. Uh, but the school's like, yo, <laughs> where are your fucking kids? You can't not put your kids in school. So CPS does get involved and they end up having to go to court for this, for taking their kids out of school. Now the kids never rat on them. All of these kids uh, stand by the fact that their parents are great parents and uh, they just didn't put them in school, you know? So no, so they wouldn't um, go to jail. They'd end up being let back home. What is that? Cultist disciple. What cult? Oh. Well, I thought you guys were running from me. I was trying to be nice and, like, not try to kill people. And now, to my final reward. Oh, more! Shit! And a death claw? Here we go. It's nothing. Who defiles the light is eternal. More will come to take my place. Okay, well, that's fine. I just wanted to see your cool thing. 
yeah, maybe I want to join. Doesn't have to be so hostile towards me. I wish I had my camera. That's pretty nifty. Okay. So, uh, but, so here's what happens. Here's what happens. So the court is like, okay, well, look, your kids aren't turning on you, but you guys give us fucking hinky feelings. So we're going to take your younger kids. Um, I think they let them keep like two oldest, but that's it. And uh, we're going to keep all the young ones and you can go. And the ones are like, yeah, all right, cool. Fuck them. We'll just have more. But luckily, she couldn't actually have more. She uh, tried to undo her fixing, but she ended up just miscarrying and never got pregnant again. Thank God. Um, so then also at that case was a detective named Hazel. And Hazel actually recognized Fred from way back in the day when him and Rainey were together and had a daughter. And she noticed that their daughter was not a part of this group of children that was taken and also was kind of wondering where Rainey was. Rainey had told Hazel how Fred could be very violent and stuff like that. So she's like, hmm, we got to look into these people. And so she starts trying, um, like getting warrants and stuff and uh trying to get shit uh people to uh like turn on them or any, just find anything she can to get into their house um and what was her kind of golden ticket to get that warrant finally was all not that just um Rini's daughter was missing because the courts were kind of like well she could be with her mom um it was that Heather was missing and no one could tell them where she was and that um, the supposed job was unable to be found anyway. So like, where could she possibly be, guys? So she ends up being able to get a warrant to search the premises for Heather's body. And in looking for Heather's body, they find... What? Oh. Thought I already got this up, but cool thing. Uh, that's where they find, um, oh, there's a lot of bodies here. There's a, there's a lot of bones here. So they go ahead and arrest Fred and Rose. Uh, but at first Fred was like, nope, it was all me. I'm a crazy rapist. And Rose was like, I can't believe my husband would do this. And, um, she found it easy to play the victim because she was so much younger than Fred. So, uh, remember by this point, I mean, it's 94 and Fred's like in his 40s and Rose is only in her 30s. F that. So he, uh, this goes on for a while and even her children believe that Rose is the victim. Uh, just as much of a victim as anybody else. She would never do these things. Their mother is amazing and it was their father, must have been their father. And uh, this, is, this is what's happening. But the cops in court, <clears throat> Do not believe this at all. What is after me? Something's after me. Oh, it's those little fucking robot things. I hate them so much. Damn it. Oh, I didn't get to discover it. Ugh. I dropped everything there. Um. So, so, at least I wasn't too far. I had already found the chemical place, so that's cool. Uh, so they end up being like, okay, we do not believe this at all. And what would kill Rose's case is one, Fred is just talking up a storm. He is just all telling every story possible. Um, but what would get them is when they go, okay, Fred, so where did you kill Charmaine? Where, when, why, how, what did you kill Charmaine with? Where's her body? Where's Rainey's body? And what they found is when they found Charmaine's body, well, there's no way that he could have killed Charmaine. He was in jail. So this automatically gets Rose. And so for the moment, they do arrest Rose, but they it's Fred with all these other bodies. Rose just has Charmaine's officially, though the cops do think she's has helped Fred a lot. Um, so Rose at this point is pissed. Uh, she totally blames Fred for all of what's happened. And she is like, you've betrayed me. So when they go to court together, she won't even look at Fred. She won't even side eye him. Nothing. She feels so betrayed by him. And this crushes Fred. Um, 
and he decides to take his life and he leaves a note for her and um this is very bad for her and way well, good for society because fuck him and now the public has nobody to blame but fred and but her because fred is gone now so any anger anybody's feeling is all now being put on rose's shoulders where it should be um should have been in the first place but you know uh, people like to think women are victims all the time so uh Rose stays adamant that she is the victim and that she would have never done these things. It was Fred and, um, but nobody, nobody believes her at all. Nobody's buying it. So they're like, okay, well, look, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to put you in jail forever. She does get convicted on all accounts, all of the accounts. Um, and even Anne Marie would come back, um, and end up telling her story to the court. And this was one thing that really helped put Rose away uh, is Anne-Marie being brave enough to face her abuser and uh, tell her truth. And she did, uh, after this situation, try to kill herself uh, multiple times. She was not successful. Uh, a little brother would end up killing himself actually in like 2020. Um, so these poor kids have went through so much, but uh, that's it. That's the story. And they killed a lot, a lot of people. Um, and they were about as sexually deviant as you can get. Uh, they are bad, super bad people. And you can try, I mean, people explain it as like, oh, uh, this is what happens. This happened because of the home they grew up in, because of his head injuries making him violent. Um, which I think I forgot to mention, actually. Ooh. Uh, the motorcycle accident caused a bad head injury and it made him... It, it said that his personality went a little darker after that. Um, but I think, really, when you think about it, he... By this time, when they were really killing, really at the peak of their uh, grossness, they knew exactly what the fuck they were doing, you know? Find the replacement motors. And that's where it's like, this is just... This is just sad. It's sad it went unnoticed for so long. It's sad that uh, so many of these women dropped through the cracks. Um, and hopefully a lot more laws and things have changed. It is harder for me because I'm obviously speaking from an American perspective. This is a uh, British case. So uh, I don't, I know you guys have similar laws, but not all the same. Anyways. I'll stop rambling now. I hope you guys have a great night. Please like, follow, comment. Let me know if you want to learn about anything else. Um, I do do true crime, but I also, my next one will be on the history of the Ouija board. Uh, it'll be a much shorter one because there's not that much history, but that's okay. And um, I like to tell scary stories. Uh, anything history wise is awesome. True crime often comes, is a lot of our history. So uh, yeah. Subscribe to hear those things. Let me know what you want to learn about. And uh, you guys have a great night.